Ninth, yes. Ninth of the fourth, 216. No, 217. Ninth of the fourth. Paradise Now Church, Brisbane Sunday meet. And we're going to rejoice again today. Hey? So uh, I'm going to start off by a bit of... Um, bit of news going on around the place. 2.5 million people. No, I got that wrong. 2 to 5 million people follow a skeleton. They're dedicated to a skeleton. Um... Mexico, United States, they follow a saint, supposedly, Santa Muta, M-U-E-R-T-E, which is basically a skeleton in a, on a shrine, you know, with pap papal sort of robes, you know, sort of like a Filipino um, black Nazarene figurine thing, you know. I don't know if you've ever seen the black Nazarene in the Philippines that they worship. Boy, boy, it looks like the devil himself. This black statue, charcoal black with a demonic looking face. They call it the black Nazarene and they worship, you know. Don't know how many worship him, but the Santa Muta, M. I can't pronounce the name right. It's M U E R T E, Saint Santa Muta. And uh, it might be a branch, I think, of the Roman Catholic Church because it's got the beads happening, you know, the rosary bead thing hanging around it. And uh, very popular with transvestines or transsexual women. So. Two to five million followers. I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. I tell you, I'm doing something wrong. Two to five million follow that rubbish trash. Can can you see by this? Can you see, brethren, by this, the mindset of people? How stupid. You know what stupid means? It means. Uh, uh, Im imbecile. It means idiot. You see how stupid people are? I mean, these people aren't just one brand of people. They're, they're, they're highly educated, you know. The real word is educated, isn't it? Highly educated people. And, and top to bottom, you know, ranging in status. Bowing down before a skeleton. I don't know whether it's supposed to be the real one or dug it up or whatever, but and it's got this big cheese here. You know? It's still got all the teeth too, and uh, with a beautiful uh, uh, robe and all sorts of things hanging off it, and they follow that. Look, I got hope. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got hope. Right? So by that we we see. What the scriptures say are perfectly true. You know, there's a minority who follow Jesus. There's a minority who have the truth. Few find the narrow gate. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. Many take the wide road to destruction. And, and, and the hardcore truth is, if you follow anyone but Jesus, you're as good as damned. You can expect eternal torment that you cannot imagine. Even the wrath to come is described in the Bible as the, what the world has never seen. Great tribulation that the world has never seen. Seven years of it by the prophet Daniel. How much more hell itself? It's a wake-up call, isn't it? 
as we get nearer and nearer to the day of the Lord. It's a wake up call. If anyone wants to go to sleep, they can go outside and sleep on the grass. Just sprawl out under the tree, you know. Let everyone have a good old look at you. This is what I'm saying. We need to prioritise a few things. You know, if we're having these late nights and doing our thing. Well, if you're going to do a late night, you might as well do it for Jesus. Because otherwise it's in vain. It's just vanity of vanity. You're just wasting your time. <laughs> I like to redeem my time. Because you know what? There, there's value in it. When I redeem my time, I make good with it. Jesus is going to bless me for it. We got blessed this week with our refrigerator. And uh, broke down the week before. And this week we got the news. Uh, the compressor was broken, $780 roundabout, maybe a bit more for the compressor alone. The refrigerator was only worth 1200 And then you got labour. Refrigeration mechanics, anything between 20 and, uh, or make it 18 and $25 an hour. And to do the job properly, to remove the compressor and put it back and regas it and check it, they said to me they do three days checking on it, testing. You're looking at fifteen hundred bucks minimum off a reputable dealer, and a crook would probably knock that up to about two five. But by the grace of God, it was all waived. Everything was waived. And it won't cost you a cent. Even the pickup and delivering. Think about that. Be like a brand new friend. Let me go another four or five years. By the grace of God. Hey? Not by my genius and my wrangling, but by the grace of God. Hey? I, I, I was it was basically a, 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 a Lazarus. In, in, in the grave thing and at the last minute at the midnight hour bang refrigeration mechanic said hang on hang on hang on I reckon we can uh, we can sort this so I praise God for that I, I, I'm just I'm feeding on that all week I, I, I'm basically Feeding on his faithfulness. I, I live in the land and I feed on his faithfulness. The Lord is so faithful. And then other blessings and trinkets came at the same time. All in the same day. Right? I mean, doing something right there. A good blessing will fall on those who rebuke the wicked. Proverbs 25, 24. Proverbs 25, 24. It says in my Bible that <coughs> No, it's Proverbs 24, 25. That's why I run a check on it. But those who rebuke the wicked will have delight and a good blessing will come upon them. We don't hear that word rebuke enough, do we? It's like a strange word in the Christos alphabet. Don't want to hear about rebuke, but it's good for us. It's like the vegetables of life. Terrorists, eh? Terrorists. Nine hundred million dollars worth of ice was cut off at the pass by the federal police. 
you think of the ruin of nine hundred million dollars of ice nearing a billion dollars of ice come into the country hey? came into this country imagine the ones they're not getting imagine the lives going to be ruined the marriages the families totally wrecked and ruined children teenagers hey? it's terrorism at its birth There's a group called Narcanon and they uh, promise to um, help out the, the druggies and those who are bound by all kinds of drugs. It's like a, a branch of Scientology, Nar Narcanon. And they have these little retreats, you know, nice and pretty, nice and pretty. Lovely surrounds and pines, whispering pines and manicured lawns and nice accommodation, lovely meals. But initial payment is $30,000. Gee, I've never charged anyone an initial payment of $30,000 to go pre. $30,000, $260 a week thereafter for lodging. Pills galore, and here's the punchline it don't work. <laughs> it don't work. Duh. And here's Jesus saying to the world daily through you and me, hopefully, you come unto me, ye who labour and are heavily laden, you Labradors and lassies. Nothing to do with the dog, lassie. You men and women, you Labradors and lassies, you ladies. Come unto me, ye who labour and are heavily laden and burdened, and troubled in your mind, and oh, woe is me. Why don't you go to Jesus? Because they don't believe. They go to a friend and they put the record on together. Winter, spring, summer, and they cry together. All you've got to do is call, and I'll be there. Yes, I will. You've got a friend. No, thank you. You got a friend. And they there for four hours of the day, drinking coffee and killing themselves with coffee and overeating and and then they go home and then they realise and it dawns on I still got the same problem. <laughs> go to Jesus. That's where look I had it up to here, I tell you. I just had it. 30 years ago, I had just had it. I've had enough, you know. I've had enough. I can't go on anymore. No, 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 no. I said, this is it. I want the truth and I want it now. And the Lord heard me. And praise God, there was a, an Aboriginal man that had an ear to hear what the Spirit was saying and came to me and told me about Jesus. No, it wasn't a crusade or a con conference. It was just a man walking in the spirit. One man walking in the spirit came to me and told me, "Hey, brother, hey, you're on the way to hell, eh?" Ah, oh, thanks a lot. Would you like a stubby? <laughs> I just rolled some fresh joints. If you want one, you know, it's good hash. Hey, no, brother, don't touch that stuff, eh? I've got to go now. This is my address if you need me, eh? Week later, like a bullet to his house. Left my H.J. Holden Caprice parked outside with the door open, the keys in, and the sunroof back. Just left it there. I didn't care who got it and drove away or not. I had other things on my mind. 
Right? I had salvation on my mind. Smashed on the door. Hey, brother, you're going to knock the door down, eh? And he brought me in and he introduced me to Jesus. And then I started walking with Jesus. And we ended up getting married. And we're going to have the wedding feast soon. And I'm invited. And I want to keep that invitation, come what may. I don't care who it is or what it is. I will be at the wedding feast of the Lamb. <laughs> As my mum used to say, all the rest can go to pot. <laughs> Woo! And she'll be at the table. My mum will be at the table somewhere. And my brother. Because they loved the Lord too and followed the Lord up to the light they had. Yes. I was listening to actually I, I was reading an article about revival it was sent to me I don't bother with it you know I'm in revival I've been in revival for 30 years daily Anyone that had been touched by God, like Paul the Apostle or Peter or uh, Moses, they were in revival from day one to day dot. And it says that uh, we're going to have to repent this article. Real Pentecostal stuff. We're going to have to repent if we want revival to come. You see that? Wrong. That is wrong attitude. That's very wrong. You wouldn't think it, would you? You wouldn't think that was wrong. Huh? All these shallow pastors and shallow Christians. and They, they just don't get it. The Lord, they won't permit the Lord to take them into the deep end. We're going to have to repent if we want revival. So what is the uh, heart condition of those people? They don't want Jesus. They want revival. It's like people going to church for something or someone. You might as well stay home or go to the pub because Jesus knows your heart. The criteria for entering the kingdom of heaven, escaping the fires of hell, is to love the Lord first and foremost. That's the new covenant. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. And then love your neighbour as you love yourself. So family gets bundled in with neighbour. <laughs> It's not family first. Hogwash. It's all bundled in. Humanity's all bundled in into the second command, which is not a great command. It's just the second. The great command is to love the Lord your God. It's not like Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer and them saying, oh, you know, souls, souls, souls. It's not about souls. It's about Jesus. It's about glorifying Jesus. Huh? So that's a wrong heart condition. We know it is because we have scripture to prove it. With the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man had the wrong heart condition. The rich man was bothered still. Even though he was in hell, it was still family first. Bring, oh, raise Lazarus from the, 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 the dead or whatever. Do a miracle. And then my family will believe. Send him to my family. You know? And then my family will believe. Your family ain't going to believe anything 
until they believe the word. Then they're really believing. All the rest is just demonic believing. Like the demons believe, but they do not do. James said that. Even the demons believe and tremble. That's more than most churchgoers. I don't even know churchgoers that tremble at the word of God. I don't even know ministers that tremble at the word of God. Demons do. Huh? Let's read it in James. Hold the ladder steady, James, James. So let's go to James, hey? James chapter 2 and the verses. Nineteen. You believe that there is one God? You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Even the demons believe and tremble. <laughs> and we think we're so great, don't we? I believe. Do you really? But they don't take the third step. And most people don't either. Believe, tremble and do. They're my brother, sister, and mother who hear the word of God and do it. Can you say amen? amen. Eh? Right? A long way to go, some people, and they've been 30 years in the Lord. <coughs> They're in the, the Lord, Lord, Lord camp. And Jesus is going to say, what are you talking about, Lord? I'm not your Lord. You were your own Lord. Your wife was your Lord. Your husband was your Lord. Your family was your Lord. Your money was your Lord. I wasn't your Lord. Go away from me. You lover of sin. Hey? Right? We're only a little flock, but I'm amazed what God does. In, in, since April 1, April the 1st, 2017, to today, the 9th, on our Facebook alone, we have reached out to 71,000 souls on Facebook alone. Then you got website, then you got YouTube, then you got Twitter, then you got the street, then you got letterboxing, then you got word of mouth and text. We're doing all right. But 71,000 just in the last nine days, eight days, nine days today. I got that from independent statistics behind our Facebook. Behind our website, there's independent statistics only for my viewing. So, and YouTube is very much up front. Although I believe unreliable. The world says very clearly, food, friendship and family. That's what their God is. Food, friendship and family. It don't get any better, they reckon. Hogwash. I'll stick with Father, Son and Holy Ghost. We got Father and Son and Holy Ghost, angels and brethren in the Word of God. We got it all. Let's press on. Yes. 
The Lord is good. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of the New Testament in Matthew chapter 10. And we're going to start reading in verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power. over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. First there's Simon who is called Peter and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus, who lived in Caraeus. No, he didn't. <laughs> uh, verse 4, Matthew 10, Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the world, the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your wallets, in your money belts. Nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, <laughs> nor staffs. For a worker is worthy of his food. Verse 11, now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a house, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor... Hear your words. When you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of the homosexuals, the land of, the Sod of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. We'll go to 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Glory, hallelujah. What a mouthful, hey? Dust your feet off when they don't receive. Dust your feet. You don't even want the dust of their house. You don't even want the dust. If they don't receive you and they don't receive the words you speak, dust your feet and go. Forget them. But we keep hanging on, don't we? Hanging on. Hanging on. Keep me hanging on. Dust your feet and go. It's because people hang on and hang on. They love their family and friends and people more than Jesus. They're of the church of the second command. And they build up their own teaching and keep going on and over and over. Same old dead ground. No one can receive the word unless father has granted it anyway is being granted to us that we believe can we go to philippians please chapter 2 
And you'll see. It's not you. It's not you. Who, oh, I believe. I'm so great. I'm a believer. No, the Lord lets you believe. Galatians chapter 2. Uh, sorry. Um, Galatians chapter 2, verse Twenty-nine. Sorry, it's not Galatians two twenty-nine. It's Philippians. Sorry about that, brethren. Philippians two twenty-nine. For to you it has been granted. Philippians chapter one twenty-nine. Sorry. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe. In him, but also to suffer for his name's sake. Having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. We have that same conflict. It's all about the cross. It's been granted to us to believe. But if you're going to say you're a believer, you're going to suffer too. There's no such thing as someone, I believe in Jesus, but they don't suffer. Well, they don't believe. They're not walking the believer's life. You will suffer. Believing and suffering go together. And when you suffer, it will be like crucifixion. <coughs> It'll be like someone's crucifying you. You're not hanging on a cross. You don't have a crown of thorns around your head. You're not bleeding externally. Internally you might be. <laughs> your heart might be bleeding. Because it's, it's just so far. The call of the Christ is so far above and beyond a demic calling. You know, like... Called to be a, a lawyer or electrician or a prime minister or a president or a, whatever you do in the world that the world can do without Jesus. Supposedly. But they can't even do that unless God gives them breath. But we don't want to hear this, do we? We just don't want it. We want the sunny Sunday sermons that do nothing for our transformation in Christ we just stay the same old people with the same old friends in the same old mud in the same old swallow with the same old backward mindset in the same old corny worldly dreams visions expectations and opinions Everybody said, oh my, I mean, amen. Hey, Matthew, sending out of the twelve. Title of our message today, the art, the art of following Jesus. It's an art. It, it, it's not some slap up thing. It's soldiering at its best. Let's go to Timothy, just nail that bit, the soldier bit, just in case you think, oh, I didn't know he was told this. <laughs> like, really? Second Timothy, second letter of Timothy. <clears throat> second epistle of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You see that? I like that's powerful to start with. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 
Verse 5. And also, let me say this. If anyone competes in athletics, and we have the Commonwealth Games coming up, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rule. There will be no crowning. Disqualified. Right? The art of following Jesus, very artistic. But the beauty of it is, given the scriptures we've read so far this morning, it's not you that has to be artistic. It's not me. It's not us that are the arty ones. Because 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, the power that Christ laid hold of for us. You see? There's an art to following Jesus. Like you got the arts, they call them in the world, like dance, music, philosophy, painting, and even advertising. These are all like a branch of learning. A branch, of, these are all branches of learning. The arts. And even so, it's the same with the Christ. I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the vine, you are the branches. There, there is an art. Someone get that door, please. There is an art to following Jesus. It's not just some religious, systematic, robotic, uh, I am a Christian. I am a Christian. You know, sort of like that Doctor Who stuff, you know. I am a dialect. It's not like that. There's an art to it. In other words, there's a learning to it. Hey? And Matthew chapter 10, which is where we're reading, is full of the following of Jesus. What's going to go down when we follow the Lord Jesus? As I just said in 2 Timothy, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You can't be strong in yourself. We have to be strong in the grace forward slash power that we find in Christ through faith obedience. That's where the power is. And everybody said amen. I am the vine, you are the branches. Hey? In other words, Jesus is saying there, if we go to John, open your Bibles to John chapter 15. Hallelujah. Hey? John 15, 1, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Hey? Let's go to verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. John 15, 5. He who abides in me and I in him, he is, or should say, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. John 15 says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is and she is cast out as a branch and then withers. And they gather them and throw them into the movie theatre. No, into the fire. And they are burned. You see that? We don't obey. He throws us out. We wither. Because we're no longer connected. But we were connected. Right? There's an art. There's an art to following Jesus. Step 
by step. Very artistic. Great learning. Great uh, mystery. Great joy. Great uh, excitement. Great revelation. Great understanding. Great is the Lord and worthy to be praised when we follow Jesus. Not religion. There's no art to religion. There's no art. You got the arts like philosophy, just write on that file. <coughs> file. I had a an intelligent man say to me one day, he was a a um, newscaster and uh, a very clever man, musician, been around. And he said to me one day, he said, I think you're a bit of a philosopher. I said, no, no way in the world. I said, that is file. I said, I'm not a philosopher. I'm a follower of Jesus. Hey? I am a follower of Jesus. That's the standout. When we follow Jesus, very artistic in our in our life, in our way. It's like writing a song. When we write a song or, or, or uh, endeavour to write a song, I always see following Jesus just like writing a song. The message of Jesus to me is like writing a song. It it's poetic. It's, Jesus' message is poetic. It's so beautiful. It, it's to the point. It's very catchy. It's very contagious. It's very meaningful. The lyrics are very meaningful and it's very simple. And the reason why it's contagious is because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Right? We can't get an, a, an art like that, like uh, dance and advertising and painting. Uh, those sort of things can say so much. If a picture paints a thousand words, why can't I paint you? Maybe a thousand words you'll squeeze out of one good painting. Maybe a few more. But let me say that following Jesus is an endless song and, and poem. It's an endless journey of joy and supernatural power and peace. The art of following Jesus is so simple. Eh? Follow the instructions. But how beautiful. Look, it's got everything you could all that you could think of dream of and want in the one walk walking with following jesus capsulates everything just have a look at this in matthew chapter 10 i can't get over this hey matthew chapter 10 and the verses this is a good one for the prosperity preachers and the Roman Catholic Church. Rome, uh, Matthew 10, 9. He's sending out the twelve and he said, Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your wallets, in your money belts. No bag for your journey. Don't even take two tunics, just the one you got on. No sandals. You're barefoot in this one. No staffs. Hey? You're not even going to be able to fight off wild beasts. I'll be doing that for you too. <laughs> <clears throat> for a worker is worthy of their food. Verse 11. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who is in it 
that is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go out, I should say when you go into a house, hold greeted. If the household is worthy, we're in 13, Matthew 10. Let your peace come upon it, but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. See? All these things going on in verse 14. Says, and whoever will not receive you or your words. This is very difficult for people. When you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust off your feet. That's how much we're not to have part with unbelievers. It doesn't matter who they are. Family, friends, relatives, old school buddies. Do they receive? I had a really good friend, you know, and he lived in, he was from Melbourne, lived in Tasmania, had a property there on the east coast near Joel's Pancake Parlour. We used to go there and eat pancakes and... Um, then we go down, just a little bit further down the road there was a place called Bichano where all the, uh, the crayfish and lobster and seafood would come in and we used to go down there and drink and I won the limbo contest down there, you know. I was a lot more uh, nimble than I am now and most probably half the weight. And, you know, won the limbo contest, limbo, limbo, and got nice and drunk and drugged out and... Uh, Anyway, and he had this lovely little uh, uh, house, upstairs, downstairs, like a little A-frame thing, and he had a lamb, and that's the one I got my photo taken with, this beautiful little lamb, and he used to grow sunflowers, you know, and do things with the seeds and sell them and blah, blah. And this guy, Alan, uh, when I actually left Tasmania, I left there and I went to Launceston and I was working there for a builder and I stayed there for a while working for a builder and the builder said, I think you came from a circus. He said, the way I walked across the roofing and, and across narrow beams so fast carrying heavy weights and blah, blah. I said, no, it's just me. I'm just awesome. No. And <laughs> left Tasmania, went back to Brisbane, blah, blah, blah. Many years later... I came across him in Toowoomba. He said, is that you, Shag? He used to call me Shag, because I was a bit that way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I go into that. And uh, we got talking. He said, oh, wow, you look well. And I said, yeah. And I started talking about Jesus. He said, look, he said, if, if we're going to talk about Jesus, I don't think we can have any sort of friendship. I said, I'm sure we can't if you don't want to talk about Jesus. And then we parted company. You see that? But he was a good friend of mine. I was the only one, I was living in a house in, in, in Brisbane, in Newmarket, and there used to be 12, 14 people living there, men and women, young, young people. I had a motorcycle then. And he was the only, Alan was the only one I really gelled with and drank with and got on with and went out with. He was a male nurse in the hospital, had a big long beard, like you should say, uh, you could say Santa Claus, and long hair, and he wore velvet all the time, you know, purple velvet. He was sort of back in the Jimi Hendrix days in his mind, you know, back in the flower power, and you know, cheesecloth trousers or whatever it was, I don't know, and. Uh, I was the only one he invited to his place in Tasmania when he got out of the house and went there and bought it and blah, blah, blah. So we were pretty close. But it didn't take me long to say, see you later. Because I knew what was required of me. He was not receiving me or the word I was speaking. See you later. If I am anything... Or anywhere today in Christ, it's because I made definite decisions about people and got rid of them real quick. Moved on with the Lord. And we're not going to go on in the Lord 
excuse me, if we don't make definite decisions because the followers of the Christ, disciples of Jesus, not some religious hypocrite, the disciples of Jesus are very decisive people with lucid thinking and backbone to stand up and say, this is who I am, this is where I'm going, and this is who I'm following. Can someone say amen? amen. The art of following Jesus. Eh? That's our message today. It, 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 it's a, the word art talks about a learning. It's a learning. And, and it should come from the pastor of the local church. They should be the ones emphasising this division, divine division. Not some cultic, Adamic, satanic, demonic, denominational, orthodox, systematic, religious division, but a divine division, which comes by the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. And everybody said, oh my. Everybody said, is that amen down there? Yeah. That's it. And we see by these instructions here, it's so simple, and it? It's black and white. Actually, it's in red. Uh, <laughs> it's very clear. I mean, what's the red? You know, red is... Red means run, son. Numbers add up to nothing. Red means alert. Jesus could have chose blue or pink because he's love, you know. But he chose red. It's like a behold. The Lamb of God who came to take away your family and friends. <laughs> oh, no, he wouldn't do that. Let's read it. We're still in Matthew 10. Let's go to Matthew 10 and the verse is. But Jesus wouldn't do that. Separate families. Oh no, I wouldn't go back to that church. Well, you better go down the Roman Catholic Church. Or Hell Song. Or AOG or COC or Hungry Jacks or KFC. But I'll stick with the church of the living lamb, the Christ. Let's read it. Let's read the red. Matthew 10. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I come to bring a sword. And we know Jesus never carried a Wilkerson sword. We know he never came like a ninja, don't we? He's talking about the word. Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father. I have come to set a daughter against her mother. I have come to set a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Well, that's not too hard, really. <laughs> and a man's enemies will be those of his own house. Oh, think about it. Is this the Jesus you follow? Is this the Jesus that you're following? I know it's the Jesus I'm following. I can tell you now. Hey? Verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. The art of following Jesus. Hey? There's an, an art to following Jesus. The word art means learning. A branch of learning. And the 
You've got the art of philosophy and the art of music and the art of uh, advertising and the art of uh, dance and the art of arts and the... But ours is the art of following Jesus. It's a learning curve we, we will never forget. <laughs> sort of like open heart surgery while being nailed to a cross without anesthetic. That's how I describe my walk. Someone says, what's your walk like with Jesus? Uh, open heart surgery while being nailed to a cross without anesthetic. Oh, I don't want to do that. Well, you won't be crowned. You will not be saved. That's the bottom line. Matthew 10, 38, and he who does not want to be crucified, he who does not want to take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy. You think, it, you think you're worthy but you don't want to suffer? You, you think that's going to be counted as worthy by Christ? Oh, I want to go to heaven but I don't want to go through that stuff. I don't want to love Jesus more than my mother. I don't want to love Jesus more than my father. I don't want to love Jesus more than my children. But I still want to go to heaven. You're dreaming with yourself. <laughs> you are fooling yourself. Right? You just put your hand up and say, I'm fooling myself. I'm in La La Land. It's a popular movie at the moment. That's all it is. La La Land. Fairy tale. And you know what fairies are, don't you? They're demons. Matthew 10, 39. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake. I mean, I had a life before. I thought it was a life, but it was a death. But I, I, I lost it. I totally, willfully lost it. For Jesus' sake. You know, motorcycles, you know, partying, drugs, drink, wild women, curse and swear, plenty of fights, you know, just break loose there and then, you know, piling off the fence, all that sort of thing. Just sort of just living like a wild animal, you know, unleashed. Hospitals, you know, cheekbones being pulled back up, getting mouths stitched up. That's the way I live. But I said, no, I will willfully give all that beautiful life up. <laughs> and that tasty, uh, tasty booze and wine, I'm going to give all that up. And all those wild women, I'm going to give all them up too. All the girls we loved before. You know, all that's going. The Charlie Pride music, you know. Rain dripping off the rim of my head. You know, all that, it's all got to go. Got to start fresh. All the old mates grew up with them. Rode with them. Cursed with them. Got to go. I'm out of here. We gotta get out of this place if it's the last thing we ever do. Sold me Harley Davidson, bought some old bomb car, drove out of town and kept driving, never went back. I need to preach Christ in all the pubs I drank in <laughs> while drinking orange juice. Thank you, Lord. The art of following Jesus, the, 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 the learning. It's a learning day by day up to the light we have. Up to the knowledge we have day by day by day. Can we really say we're growing day by day? Can we really say we're forsaking the things that Jesus said to forsake? We've dusted our feet off with the people who don't want to hear it. And you're fooling yourself thinking they're your friends. You're just fooling yourself. They're not your friends because once they find out the truth... 
if it is the truth, that you really do love Jesus and you really do want to do what he says, they're going to walk away anyway. But you might think, I'll just hide in a denomination. I'll just hide in some orthodox church, preferably a big one where I'm not noticed. Well, look, you're just deceiving yourself to hell. And the day of judgment will come and he'll look at you and say, I don't know you. You never spend any time with me. You spend all your time with your family and friends. You can stand up, brother. You spend all your time with your family and friends. How can I know you? How can you know me? You know how you know a person? You, you spend time with them. And you get to know them better and better and better. Sometimes it's not real pleasant, is it? When you really find out what you're dealing with. <laughs> ah, married at first sight. Really? If it wasn't on television and you weren't getting praised and looked at, would you still do it? <laughs> mm, probably not. And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits. You know, when people sin, you know what that is? It's an unclean spirit. It's an unclean spirit trying to manoeuvre, try, try, trying to manipulate you. But we have power over our unclean spirits. We have power as the disciples of Christ. As people who are under his disciplining doctrine and word, we have power. You know what I mean? you got these people casting demons out of people. You know, They're casting demons out of so-called so spirit-filled Followers of Jesus. I've never heard of it in the Bible. I've never heard of it. I, I, I heard of a, a guy that was in a case of incest, having a sexual relationship with his mother in the Bible. But they never, Paul never cast the demon out of Peter. They just booted him out of the church. Because it wasn't a demon, was it? It was free will. And you got all these churches with their demons. They're blaming everyone in town. And when they're finished blaming everyone in town, they go in, 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 into the, uh, the third heaven. And they start blaming demons. <laughs> they start blaming the neighbours. Or they start blaming, hey, who's doing this thing? The devil cannot tell you to do anything. He only asks you or invites you. And it's up to you to make your decision. I've given you power over that. I've given you power over unclean spirits to cast them out, heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. Okay? Power. The Lord gave his disciples power to be the followers. We can't follow the Lord. It's impossible to follow the Lord unless he gives us power. Let's open our Bibles. In the writings of John, or better still make it <coughs> Ephesians 4. E e Ephesians 4. You see, the art of following Jesus is a teaching. Ephesians 4 and the verses 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the world in the stupidity of their thinking. I like that. I like that. I'm paraphrasing here in Ephesians 4, 17, verse 18. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them. 
because of the blindness of their heart. We're in Ephesians, brother, and we're in verse 18. See, the understanding is darkened. You can't have the light. We can't have lucid thinking, precise, clear, supreme thinking, godly thinking, without the life and the light of Christ in our life. That's why we're not to, that, as it says in verse 17, no longer walk as the world. Ask yourself, are you walking like the people of the world? Do you live like the people of the world? Eh? There's an art to following Jesus. Is an art. I don't know whether this is going to be a series. It might. Ephesians 4 and the verses 19. Who being past feeling, their past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness, uncleanness, and greediness. But you have not so, you have not so learned Christ. You have not learned that art. Jesus doesn't teach us that way. But you have not so learned that Christ allows and leads in this way. Verse 21, that is, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in him. I like that. It is an art, isn't it? It's an art. It's a beautiful learning. It's a poem. It's a song. It, it you know, it's catchy. It, it, it's, it's, Contagious. It's meaningful. The, the, the lyrics are meaningful. But they're so simple. But forever stay. I will write, I will write my word in your heart with the tip of a spiritual diamond and I will bring it to your remembrance in time of need by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I rely on. That's I got nothing else. It has to be him. It, 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 as Paul said to Timothy, by the power, of, 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 by the grace that you will find in Christ, the power kept by the power of God. 1 Peter 1, 5. Read it. Kept by the power of God through faith, obedience. That's how we're kept. That's how it is. It's an art. It's a learning. It in the following. Do this. Don't do that. Can't you read the sign? Hey, but yet I've heard Pentecostal, especially that that uh, crooked, woeful woman, Joyce Meyer. I detest that woman who says, it's not about do's and don'ts, you know. Well, what are we reading in Matthew chapter 10? What a woeful woman. What a liar and a thief. And she said she loves the people of God. And she sells all this propaganda and this garbage paraphernalia. And it's got price tags on everything. She even sells her notes, her so-called sermon note. It's not a message from God. It's a sermon note that she wrote out in pen, and she even sells them. Really? Come on. Surely people are going to wake up and see that they're charlatans, these people. The Joyce Myers, the Benny Hinds, the Joel Osteen. The, the Joseph Princes, the television evangelist, 
the Billy Graham who was a Roman Catholic Baptist who was originally promoted by a, a, a friend of Hitler who had a newspaper company if you want the article I'll give it to you that's why Billy Graham was so great but they say it was a God thing God does not back the Roman Catholic Church he calls it a whore church he describes it as a church with a golden chalice and purple and scarlet robes do you know any other churches with those colours Roman Catholics, the Anglicans maybe the Uniting Church identified perfectly has deceived millions upon millions even the kings and the rich and the wealthy of the world totally deluded by the Roman Catholic system and all its wicked rituals and lies of Eucharistic worship and mocking Jesus daily with their, their pretend priesthood where there's no more priesthood because Jesus rent the veil from the top to the bottom and the Holy of Holies is open then you don't need a priest you come in the name of Jesus <laughs> it's so simple there's an art to it the art of following Jesus the learning some people don't want that they don't want to hear it and they don't want to do it they want to stay in the mud they want to stay in their stinking religion they want to stay with their own mindset which equals their own lordship and he ain't lord jesus is only lord when you follow him you get it now if you follow jesus he is lord okay. we know by paul speaking to the thessalonians that the Thessalonians followed Paul, Silvanus and Timothy and the Lord. You see? But they only followed Paul, Silvanus and Timothy because they followed the Lord. <laughs> the art, it's a painful learning. It's not easy. Even Jesus said to Paul, you will suffer many things. You will suffer many things for my name's sake. Hey? I come to divide up the house. Oh, we don't want that. Well, you better tell them to believe. <laughs> you don't want your house divided up? You better tell them to repent and believe. But if you do say, well, if you don't want the house divided up, you better repent and believe. They might think, well, I might just repent so the house is not divided. It's not true repentance. True repentance is repenting because you see yourself for what you really are, a filthy, ungodly person. Good for nothing. That's me. That's where I was when that Aboriginal told me, hey, brother, you're going to hell, eh? I said, I know I am. That's why I'm here. I don't want to go to hell and I want to be saved from me. I want to be saved from sin, self, Satan, the wrath to come and hellfire. Can you help me? Yeah, I can help you, brother. You want to pray? Hey. God was all over me. The fear of God was upon me. And I repented. And 30 years later, here I am preaching the art of following Jesus. Because I know what it's like to follow Jesus. Because I followed him for 30 years. I didn't go halfway and start following some other God. No, no. I followed him. <laughs> Come what may. My losses you would not believe 
<laughs> what I have surrendered to follow Jesus, if I told you everything, you wouldn't believe me. It's crucifixion. Or it's hell. One or the other. Hey, they're going to crucify me. Saving all my money for a rainy day. Ephesians 4.17, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the world. Hey? Don't walk like the world. Because they what? Walk like an Egyptian. They walk like an Egyptian. Sinful. Lustful. Lewd. Immoral. Untrustworthy. Ungodly. Lovers of pleasure. Not lovers of God. Lovers of money. Lovers of self. Unreliable. Ephesians 4.18 Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. That's the most intelligent. I'm talking university. I'm talking professors and scientists. Darkened minds. Ignorant darkened minds because they don't follow Jesus. Prime Ministers, Presidents, ignorant, darkened minds because they don't follow Jesus. Hard to believe, isn't it? Hard to believe. Hard to swallow that. Leading professor or leading Bible dean or well, the Pope even. Hard to believe. With so many robes and so much gold surrounding him. Even the cornices in, 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 in his one of his twelve palaces are solid gold. Even the paintings of the Vatican, the Church of England can't afford to buy just the paintings. Hard to believe that he has a darkened mind. And is ignorant. It's hard to believe. And he has a blinded heart. But it's true. Because he doesn't follow Jesus. Because they don't preach the doctrine of Jesus. They don't preach Jesus come to divide up the hell. They don't preach that you're to love Jesus more than your mother and your children and that brand new baby and grandma and grandpa. They don't teach that. It creates too much friction. There'll be no more bums on seats. And if there's no more bums on seats, there's no more purses and wallets. Someone say amen. That's why Jesus said, in the last days, it'll be like the days of Noah. Days of Noah, there were seven followers, one driver of the boat. And then he confirmed that by saying in Matthew 7, 13, 14, few find the narrow gate. And then he even went the extra mile on that and then said, will I find anyone faithful to me when I come? But who believes my report? Who believes his report? Who believes John 15, 6? No fruit. Cast out of his church. Withered and then burnt. But the branch was in him. You can't cast someone out of a room that's not in the room. John 15, 16. But it starts off, doesn't it? Any branch in me. We really must check to see if we're still in the faith. 
at least we'd be disqualified. But I know I will not be disqualified. For I can do no damage to the truth. It's a series. Yep, it's going to be a series. So, <laughs> the art of following Jesus, it's an art. It's a branch of learning. And not many people want to learn. Because you know what learning involves? Learning involves a teacher. And you know what teaching involves? It involves students. And when you have a teacher and a student, the student must humble themselves under that teacher. And a lot of people don't want to humble themselves. Because most people think, I know more than him, I'm better than him, I'm greater than him, I'm richer than him, I've been to a higher schooling than him, I've got more money than him. That don't mean nothing. I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how tall you are, I don't care how many tattoos you got, I don't care how many gyms you go to, I don't care how, how many friends you got, I don't care what you got. When Jesus gives the teaching to someone and anoints someone to teach, you will know. You will know they have the good. And ain't no one going to stop it or change it. And so they miss it, don't they? Like they miss Jesus. They miss Jesus. The teacher of Israel was so proud he had to come by night. Nicodemus, he snuck in through the night. I always see that in the modern days as going by internet. You know what I mean? They get on and listen in. But you never hear from them. Never hear from them. You know? Never hear from them. We got nearly 60,000 views on one of our video teachings, but I've never heard from anyone. What does that tell you? 60,000. I mean, that's nothing. That is nothing in the cyber world. Cyber world talks millions and billions. But I'm saying 60,000. There Surely there'll be someone there to say something. Not a word. See the stinking devilish pride? Hey. And then you got all these others feeding, feeding on the YouTube, feeding on the Facebook, feeding on the website, and you never hear from them. You never, never receive an offering. But what does the scriptures say? You're to support the feeder. You're to support the feeder, the one feeding you. But they don't, do they? And they think, ha, 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 he, he, he. I'm getting it all free. No. You just earmarked yourself for judgment. You're mocking God's word. He said, support the feeder. You're not fooling me, because I know the word. My mind is not darkened. I am not ignorant. And my heart is not blinded. I'm speaking the truth, as the truth is in me. The root of the matter is in me. So many people curse themselves. They wonder why they're troubled. They wonder why they've got issues. They wonder why they don't go free. They wonder why they can't rejoice. They wonder why all these things. It's because they really don't know the art of following Jesus. They really do not submit to the teaching of Jesus. When you submit to the teaching and you do what the Lord says, you will be crucified. <laughs> If they call the master of the house Beelzebub, father of the blowflies. And you know where blowflies hang out, don't you? They called him Beelzebub. What are they going to call you? Beautiful, gorgeous man? What are they going to call you? What are they going to think of you? Hello? Listen, I teach the teaching of the one they call Beelzebub. 
His name is Jesus. So I can expect the same treatment. Okay? When you walk in the footsteps of the Master, it's so beautiful. I've never tasted, experienced, or seen anything to compare with it. Step by step. Hallelujah. So I'm going to leave it there. And we're going to press on. And we'll catch up with this next week. Amen. And we'll get glory back. I want to give you all the glory, Jesus. Everybody said. Amen.